Hey guys, welcome to another great episode of the Every Arkansan Podcast. I'm Drew Davis, and this week I've got my friend Daniel Brown. Daniel Brown works with youth in downtown Little Rock. His story is a great one, and we hope you enjoy. Daniel Brown, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, I wouldn't have anyone else to talk about youth in central Arkansas, so <laughs> the king. Ah, ooh, the, the king of messing up, and um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, who you are. Yeah, uh, so I'm originally from Little Rock, um, stayed here for like four years, and I moved to Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, and lived there throughout, um, just like the primary school, and so I graduated high school in Natchitoches, Louisiana. Uh, and then moved back up to Little Rock. Uh, I'm one of eight kids, uh, two boys, six girls. So I like to say that uh, for Sundays, if I want to look good for church, I had to camp out in the bathroom or I wasn't going to get it. Um, don't really have much of a like a co- collegiate kind of background. I went to Bible college uh, for two years out in Birmingham and uh, studied just how to do ministry and, and things like that and, uh, at Church of the Highlands and uh, and and kind of I'm, I'm kind of jumping back and forth because I, I like to like get a little bit further and then get some backstory and stuff um so one of those movies that completely loses me right is your thing yeah so. exactly so then like you, you're about to get to the climax and then they you know flashback and it's black and white and you're wondering about this guy's childhood or something like that so that's yeah that's what and so um my once my once my parents divorced when i was like four or five uh i moved so i wasn't really kind of close with both sides and so there was a lot of moving back and forth and uh, my mom would always my stepmom would always take me to church and i'd say i have a drug problem you know i didn't want to go to church so she drug she drugged me to church <laughs> uh and then uh, when i was 19 um i went back to natchitoches where a lot of my high school friends were and uh got into like the party scene or whatever and i literally did not sleep for like three days um was going back to shreveport it was like an hour uh maybe an hour and 15 and had a, a, my body literally just gave out, passed out behind the wheel, uh, almost died. Um, I didn't have my seatbelt on, so my face kind of like cracked against the, uh, the windshield. I did not have any kind of health insurance or whatever, so the, the doctor just slapped a Band-Aid on my head and sent me on my way. Uh, that when I was like, man, I could have, you know, that could have been it. And so um, I went home uh, and really just had an encounter with God, and I was just like, you know, I, I understand that my life is like I could have been gone, but I wasn't, and I, I I think I need I think I need to figure this thing out. And so, April twentieth, twenty twelve, is when you know my life changed for the better. I met Jesus and kind of went on this path of finding exactly what what He had for me. And so, what what was the that next step for you? I mean, you 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 jumped out of the party and the the fun lifestyle. Yeah, it just it. Um, I just quit cold turkey, a lot of that stuff, and then I started I started trying to check out different churches and stuff. I mean, I went to all kind of churches. I went to uh, a old, um, a really old church. I was like the oldest. I mean, I was the youngest, like by thirty five years. I went to a uh, really kind of contemporary style, kind of non non denominational. I was just trying to figure things out. I went to this one church. I'm not going to uh, name any names, but I walk in and the pastor is literally rapping. Like they they get they get they kind of get in the moment. They get in the spirit and they start like they prophesy, but they they do it in rhyming or whatever. So I tried every church, uh, just trying to figure out um, you know what is church, what is it supposed to look like, and comparing that to scripture. And then after after a while. Um, I just made the move back to Little Rock just because of better job opportunities. And then I finally got plugged into a church in Jacksonville. And so um, I think my next step was, let me get in the church. Let me let me get around other people who uh, believe the same thing as I do. And then that led to serving. And my first serving opportunity was actually at the Arkansas Dream Center a while back. And so uh, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with just I think I, I, as a volunteer, I probably clocked 40 hours a week just kind of hanging out with you guys and the kids and stuff like that. So, yeah. And then you went into the away missions type mode. I I did, but I didn't. So, <laughs> um, so I, I, I prayed a prayer. I was like, Lord, I'm bored. This can't be it. This can't be all that life has for me. 
Um, and so um, through a series of like just connecting with people and relationships and things like that, I found out about this organization down in Lake Charles. And so um, I went down there. It's like a disaster relief type thing. So a natural disaster happens and we don't fly there. We actually sail there on these on these big cargo ships, these uh, fishing vessels. Uh, but the funny thing is from 2014 to 2016, there was not one natural disaster. From <laughs> August 2014 to January 2016, there was not one. And so we didn't deploy. So I was kind of like a missionary, but I was a local missionary. We did a lot of like community outreach and stuff like that. Uh, very similar to the Dream Center, but um, I was a sailor that didn't sail anywhere. I didn't, it was, it was like, well, that, that was exciting. But I did learn a lot and it led me to my next step, which was Bible college. And you actually came back, you worked for the Dream Center for a summer feeding kids. Yes. And then you, you packed up everything and moved to all places, Birmingham. Row tie row. I did. <laughs> um, yeah, I, that was, that was a leap of faith too. Cause I didn't, I, I didn't have the money for that. Like I was, um, uh, I would, I was coming right from out of the mission field to to working uh, uh, with you guys in the summer program, doing the mobile feeding, and then going straight from that to uh, to to Bible college. And so that that was a leap of faith because I didn't know where the money was going to come from, but it always came, and and that was great because it. I was actually um, I had three options. I had like three options to choose, like my major, so to speak. And one of them was outreach, kind of dream center. Uh, they have a dream center out in, in Birmingham too. And so, um, but I didn't go that route. I was like, ah, you know, I already, you know, I kind of already did that. I want to learn something new. And uh, so I chose a, like a pastoral leadership type of thing, uh, and, and and it really taught me how to lead myself and how to lead others well, and uh, how to do baptisms and all that stuff. And uh, I thought that I was going to do that because I skipped over student ministry. I was like, I don't want to do that. That's intimidating. I came in with polo boots, like some Levi jeans and a polo. And these guys were wearing like flow tees and, and like Chelsea boots. And they had holes in their jeans. And I didn't like that. And here I am with holes in my jeans now. So they, they converted me. I got converted twice. Um, I, I got converted to a Christian and I got converted to a hipster. Um, but, uh, but so I, I skipped over student ministry. Didn't want to do it. And then during pastoral leadership, I kind of really love student ministry and what it and what it provided for for kids because I didn't have that growing up like I said I got saved when I was 19 um, so I spent you know 19 years not knowing uh, anything about Christ not knowing you know that he had a plan for my life and here are these middle schoolers and high schoolers who are all on fire for God and and really I like I wasn't it was a it was a feeling of man if I can just set them up so they don't have to go through what I went through um, I'll win and so uh, it's funny that I, I skipped over Dream Center and student ministry because I was like, oh, I want to do this. And then it kind of came full circle where I'm doing <laughs> student ministry at the Dream Center. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think it was God's plan. I think he worked it out the way he wanted to work out. I learned what I need to learn to, to get here and do what I'm doing now. And you spent a few years there and then we recruited you back here at graduation. Yes. Yes. It was instant. So what happened was uh, I... I, I got with you guys, and then I went to Israel for a little bit, and I came back like instantly. Like I graduated, it was two days. I moved here, did this, and then went. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that because that like a lot of people stressing out. That's like a thing. Like where I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to college and I'm gonna get a job, right? And everybody was stressing out. I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just, <laughs> I, can I graduate first? Like, is that? A, and then, um, and then just the relationships, and just and just and just knowing the vision of the Arkansas Dream Center and how that aligns so much with what I wanted to do, it was the perfect fit. I I couldn't picture myself doing anything else, uh, coming right out of Bible college. And, and just for everyone's sake, what what are you doing at the Dream Center? What's what's your role? Yes. So uh, my job uh, is to figure out a way to let kids have fun without building, burning down the building. And so, um, so I, I help with the middle school, middle schoolers and high schoolers. We, with the middle schoolers, it's primarily uh, after school program. Uh, and so uh, I only have them for like maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, and so uh, a lot of that is life lessons and, and trying to uh, create a culture within them to, to, to dream for something bigger than uh, just the, the normal, I want to be in the NFL or I want to be a rapper or something like that. I love those goals. I had those goals growing up, but I just want them to kind of expand that and see like, 
um, like what what's that one thing that even if you told somebody like they laugh at it about like that big that big dream the very big dream so uh, I, I try to kind of cultivate that and just cultivate a culture of like just honoring people and 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 that culture of like following Christ and what that meant uh, and what that means even as a middle schooler and then for the high schoolers it's kind of a different thing I um, uh, we do slam which is uh, for me it's been a whole lot of uh, opening up a gym letting guys come in and play basketball uh, and just hanging out and, and eating food and, and joking and talking and um, and then figuring out a way to kind of turn the conversation. I, we call it like Jesus juking, where you, like you're in the <laughs> middle of a conversation and then, well, you know what the Bible says about that and then you kind of turn it and then we have a great conversation. Um, and so it's 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 a lot of, uh, what I've realized is it's, it's a lot of walking alongside them mm -hmm. as opposed to being on stage and getting the microphone in your hand and the lights on you, stuff like that. Um, just studying the life of Christ, uh, a lot of the stuff that we get wasn't him, you know, in the synagogues. Uh, there was some. Uh, there wasn't him when he was on the on the on the uh, the hillside, um, you know, preaching to the to the thousands. There was some of that, but a lot of it was just walking and talking with these guys. You look at Nicodemus who pulled him off to the side and have a conversation with him. And so uh, a lot of that is just just doing life with them and then waiting for that moment where God says, hey, uh, I got something I want to say to them. And so uh, I just we just build relationships and, and try to keep that going as long as we can. And I mean, just for people that are like, oh, I wish I could do that. Right. Or, oh, man, I, I messed up too much. Mm -hmm. to do. I mean, what, what are these kids really looking for? They're looking for somebody to just be there. They're looking for uh, if you if you take a almost like a like a poll of all these kids' lives, uh, you'll notice that you know on the weekends they're not doing anything but being cooped up in a room, uh, you know maybe playing Fortnite and eating takis or whatever. Like they don't. There's not really much going on outside of. There's not any enrichment. There's not any you know like let's go out and 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 and, and create experiences and opportunities and memories, and so. Um, that's that's really all it is. It's do you like movies? Do you like playing video games? Do you like hanging out? Do you like going out to eat? Invite somebody alongside you to do that. And um and a lot of, like Sunday I, I took some kids out to go see Captain Marvel, mainly because I wanted to see Captain Marvel, right? And so I was just like, what? You know, I I can I can invite somebody in, and that's what they want. They just want to be invited. They want to feel like they're welcome. They want to have somebody um, who's speaking life into them because a lot of times they're not getting that. Um, I heard this kind of crazy statistic in which um, for the kids, they have like 4,000 negative thoughts a day, a day uh, and only like 30-something positive thoughts. And so if you listen to the conversation, it's a bunch of negative stuff. And so I feel like it's our job as volunteers, as people who work uh, in, in nonprofits and ministry and, and just anybody who wants to impact a, a student's life to speak those positive things, speak life into them so that, you know, we can kind of quit that cycle of just negative thinking and, and negative thinking and negative thinking, then that turns into negative living. Mm -hmm. um, let's just kind of speak into that and give them, you know, um, and help them find out what God says about them. So, yeah, I mean, and that, I think that's huge because you don't have to be volunteering in a ministry or in a church to do that. You don't. You All you have to do is just have an interest. Like, what are you interested in? What do you like doing? Like, I play Ultimate Frisbee with the kids yesterday. Um, they they've never they've never done anything like that, but I I loved it and it was funny because the girls were dominating and there was only two of them. It was like you know six guys and uh, but it's just just sharing those experiences with them um, and then using that as a vehicle to share the gospel with them to share life lessons and stuff like that. So it's it's it sounds intimidating. It sounds like I have to know the whole Bible. I have to go through a Bible college. You don't. You just, you know, have have a verse ready, just, you know, uh, in your quiet time, get a verse, whatever, and then find out how can this apply to my life, and then how can this apply to their life. It's really easy. So, so you got two things kind of going on. So after school program. Yes. So what what's that look like for a volunteer? What kind of people are you looking for? Mm -hmm. How can someone just jump into something like that, hours, whatever? Right. Um, so... Our, our middle schoolers, uh, they get out around like 3.45. It takes them 15 minutes to get to where they are to, to the Dream Center. And so uh, we, we start our program at 4 o'clock. Um, from 4 to 4.15, we're just, we're just hanging out. The gym is open to them. They like to play uh, basketball and football and, you know, 
you know, we, we have other things that they can do and volleyball and such. So, uh, and then from 415 to around 445, uh, all it is is just, just talking about current events and just talking about, um, you know, what's their worldview, what, how are they seeing the world through their lens. Um, and then um, from 445 to around 530, 545, we're eating and then we'll have a little bit more time to play. Um, as far as like volunteers and, and people, I just need, I just need people who, who don't mind, you know, getting a football in the hand and throwing it around or, you know, playing volleyball or sitting down with a student who, who may not want to play basketball because um, the reality is I love, I love playing ball, but not everybody loves playing ball. Mm-hmm. And so there are some kids who, eh, that's not my cup of tea. And so sometimes uh, I, I have to stop what I'm doing and go and go over and, you know, just hang out with the other kids who don't mm-hmm. who don't want to do that. And so uh, if you're an extrovert, introvert, if you like if you like being active or you just like talking, whatever it is, um, there's there's a there's a need for that. There's 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 somebody that you can relate to. So um, there's not really a specific like I need somebody who who's who's great at playing ball and can teach the kids. If you can, great. But if you can't, if you just love just hanging out, sharing a meal. I could like, I could, I could, I could find a spot for you. And so it's a, it's an all call. Um, uh, if you, if you know these kids' life, they, they need somebody, anybody. And I, and I think it's important for people to remember is these are kids trying to figure out who they want to be. Exactly. So okay, it might be football this week, a firefighter next week, a YouTuber the next week, or whatever. Fashion designer. Give it someone for these kids just to talk to. Absolutely. I mean, I. I do X, Y, Z. Oh, what's that about? Ask the questions or whatever. Get let them mm-hmm. help them mark it off their list. Mm-hmm. Or and, and I know you've got some kids that are hyper competitive athletes, and yes. you've got that one kid that he's going to sit there on the bench and he's going to cut jokes and right. laugh at them, and and he's not going to ever step foot on the basketball exactly. Court. And so I mean, I think it's all types, just like it is in the rest of the world, and Absolutely. all types of people can find their place. Mm-hmm. So you've also got slam. Yes, so yes. Which, that's more of a high school it's, type ministry. Right. It's more of a high school engagement. And, and we're in a really exciting time right now because uh, it's um, we're, we're starting to figure out exactly where we need to uh, where the need is. Uh, and so we can open up a gym and we can and we can have fun and we can play ball and we can cut jokes and we can laugh and we can eat, talk about scripture. Uh, but then they leave. And so, uh, and you talk about this a lot about winning the battle of influence and the, the more amount of time you spend with somebody. Uh, that's that's who that's who wins, and so uh, now we're brainstorming about what does it look like to to go into schools. You know, they have like club days and stuff like that. What does it look like to start at like almost like a slam club at the schools? Uh, what does it look like to you know maybe open up our gym a little bit more frequently in order to create like almost like a DC slam you know basketball you know league or whatever? Just kind of trying to figure out more ways uh, to spend time with them to to open up. Um, uh, that those doors so that they can come in into a safe environment, which is healthy, which is life giving. And so, um, but a lot of it is, you know, um, it's, it's almost like gym centered, you know, mm-hmm. which is great. And so uh, we invite the guys out and the girls out and they have a ton of fun. It's all about relationships. It's all about, um, you know, just connecting one-on-one and finding, finding who you connect with. And that becomes like a mentoring relationship, which is really what we want. We want, uh, people to be able to be called on and to speak into their lives about all kind of stuff. And so uh, it's it's a lot of coaching. It's a lot of mentoring. It's a lot of accountability. Um, and so uh, that's that's what if you if you're looking for somebody to pour into um, out of your wealth of experience, life experience and knowledge and wisdom and stuff like that, uh, then SLAM is a great place to plug in with some high schoolers who may be looking at college as the next step. And so if, if there's a person out there that says, man, I, I really want to work with, with youth or, or with middle mm-hmm. school, and I mean, they don't have to commit six years of their life. They can just no. come and try. I mean, it, it, it's really figuring out what you want. Right. Easy commitment. Right. And that's, and that's what I want. I always tell people, come and hang out. Come and get the culture. Come and get, um, you know, come and see what the volunteers alike because if you don't like serving alongside somebody then you're probably you're gonna you're not gonna come back and so just come uh we call it the slamily especially with the instead of family we call it slamily so it's come and be a part of the family come and be a part of what we got going on and um and usually it's it's a it's 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 those people who come in like this is great i want to hang out with you guys along with the students and so 
um, it's just a lot of fun. It's a great culture. It's a great community. And especially for single people. Absolutely. I mean, I'm one of those single people. I'm trying to figure out, I mean, Kristen, who's behind the camera over here, her husband was with it. I mean, the male. Yeah. Yeah. Peter and Kelsey Nicole. There's so many couples that have met and gotten married in the Slamly. Right. It's, look, it's a, it's a great ministry that you may not come looking for it. But uh, I'm faithful. I, I believe that if you're faithful to God's vision, he'll be faithful to yours. And uh, I'm waiting on it, you know. Um, definitely beats FarmersOnly.com. It definitely, that one, and, um, you know, I don't know if you've ever been on BlackPeopleMeet.com, uh, but uh, it's not really, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, would, I would rather, you know, do ministry than, you know, be a, so my, my, my grandmother actually was like, you should, you should get on uh, Christian Mingle. I was like, uh, I don't know. Um, she, I think I've seen she, John Chris talk about that. Right, uh, right. She actually set me up an account. She got my information, but I hadn't been on there though. I, yeah. yeah. So, what's the best way if someone's interested in just kind mm-hmm. of jumping in, trying it out, to contact you? Right. So, um, my email is Daniel at uh, ARDreamCenter.tv, um, and that way um, I would I, I, we can communicate back and forth. I can connect you with our uh, volunteer coordinator, and then she can get you set up. Uh, and so. Uh, that's the best way to to, to contact. Um, I'm also on Instagram, but that's 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 hit or miss for me. Uh, at real life uh, you know, uh, real life DB is my is my Instagram handle and stuff like that. But email is the best way, um, and and that way we can connect and see you know what's the what's the best spot. Is it middle school? Is it high school? Or maybe it's something completely different. Maybe you want to go reach the high schoolers at a certain neighborhood. Maybe you're close to that neighborhood. Sunset, for example. Um, that way we can kind of plug you in wherever. And so um, email is definitely the best way. Okay, awesome. Well, Daniel, we're so thankful that you came back to Arkansas and that we were able to find a place for you here. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited about what you're doing, Mm -hmm. the lives you're changing, and just your willingness to get in the trenches and just go for it. It's an honor. It really is. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Every Arkansas Podcast. Daniel's a great friend and he pointed out something in there about life on life. One person getting in there, getting to know a person. People are craving relationships and there's a place for you at the Arkansas Dream Center helping Daniel reach today's youth. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell down below. We would love to hear from you. So leave us some comments about what you loved most about this video.